Let's talk. Hey friends, Kyle here. Welcome back to the channel. Now today we're gonna to be talking about the Goat Story Arco. Now I've had this grinder for over a month now, used it every day, and tested extensively the flavor profiles, the workflow, and everything you'd wanna know about a grinder. Not only have I tested it with its electric base, I've tested it with its hand grinder function as well. And you can have a good grinder, but today there are so many great grinders on the competition in this marketplace. You really wanna know which is the best option. So today we're gonna to compare it to another kind of hand grind, electric hand grinder, if you will. This is the Lego Mini from Option O. And then the Niche Zero has a massive 63 millimeter conical burr. So we got three conical burrs here with low retention and you wanna know what should, when should you buy. So the goat story, what are my thoughts? Well, let me get right to it. I actually like this grinder. It's not without its flaws though. And I, I wanna address some things that you should be aware of if you're interested in this grinder, as well as things that I would consider other grinders over four, but reasons why you would also wanna consider the Arco. Be sure to stick around because I'm gonna do a blind cupping and share my experiences with even the cup profiles of these grinders. And I'm gonna be brutally honest today because this grinder wasn't sent to me by Goat Story. While they did offer to send this for free as a marketing campaign, which I thought was so great, so kind, I refused and I actually purchased this grinder and bought it with Patreon funds. So I'm gonna give this away to a Patreon after I'm done testing and comparing it. So there's that, but you should know that. But before we dive into this review, let's quickly talk about today's sponsor, which is Standard Magazine. Now you're watching this channel because you're probably interested in coffee. And if you're not, well, um, this is gonna be a weird video for you, but hi. This is a specialty coffee magazine that I cannot recommend enough. Right now I'm reading an article called Tasting What You Smell. And this is talking about the case of sweetness in coffee. It's articles like these in Standard Magazine that really I can't find anywhere else. There aren't Instagram accounts, there aren't YouTube channels that are producing the content that Standard is putting out. Now, not only is Standard an amazing magazine with beautiful pictures and everything on beautifully printed colored paper, it comes with coffee every single issue. And this is a coffee coffee from Tropicalia, which is produced and roasted in Colombia. And even this issue here has a little box that opens up and tells you a story about the producer. If you wanna check them out, be sure to use the link down in the description below or go to standardmag.com forward slash Kyle. It'll support this channel, but it'll also get you free international shipping as well as coffee in every single order. Go check them out and thank you Standard so much for sponsoring this video. Let me talk about its design. Now I was really skeptical because I didn't think a company like Goat Story would be able to pull off the design that they did here, like the, the, the build quality. And that's no critique to Goat Story as a company. I think just not having a grinder before on the market, I was a little skeptical. This though, out of the box, feels great. I'm really impressed with the build quality here. I think everything is metal except for a couple plastic pieces. The grind attachment for this to the grinder actually works pretty well. My one critique is that I found while grinding, this can shift, but in my experience and testing, I haven't noticed a difference in grind distribution based off that shift. We will talk about grind distribution in just a second though. Now this grinder uses a little switch up here on and off. This sounds terrible. This is a bad sounding grinder. Let me show you. <sighs> so yeah. It's loud and there's really no excuse here. I think a grinder like this, you can assume because it's smaller, it's quite, it should be louder. But you then take a grinder like this and the Lego Mini. I'll be honest. At first I really was bothered by the sound here. This is quieter than grinders like the Sete 30, Sete 270. So if you're coming from a grinder like that, this is still quieter. Those grinders are ridiculously loud. I'm just disappointed that in 2022, the release of this grinder, it's still, it's too loud. But the grind quality is more important. So if you can get past that sound, it is annoying, okay? There's no butter coating it. It's annoying in sound and I, I just don't love it. I don't love the sound that this creates, All right? This is a 200 watt motor uh, it's spinning at about 360 RPMs. It doesn't have any issues with stalling. I've tested that extensively, but it's loud. Okay, so that's just, maybe that doesn't matter to you. Now keep in mind, I actually like this grinder, but 
you should know everything that I don't. And so the other thing I don't love about this grinder is it's hand grinding adjustment. Let me explain. While hand grinding, this obviously is gonna spin at a different RPM than what you would do on the electric motor. Now this spins at 360 RPMs. I'd be pretty impressed if most people could do that on a hand grinder. Now we're still addressing and learning the idea of what RPM and the effects it has on coffee. And what we're learning is that it's not as black and white as you might think. Each grinder is different, coffees are different, and bird geometry plays a different role on RPM. So what I've found is in doing some testing and sifting, this grinds about 50, 60 microns coarser when hand grinding. So if I'm pulling shots on espresso, I am getting a little more clarity while hand grinding. Now this isn't a big issue, but the problem is grind adjustments need to be compensated. You can't take the same adjustment on the electric grinder and then all of a sudden just do hand grind and assume the same results. They'll be similar enough that if you're not nitpicking, you'll still get good cups of coffee. But if you really want to have the same results, you're gonna have to adjust, in my experience, go a little coarser on hand grinding. Also, I'm nitpicking here, but this, this isn't well thought out. This should have some kind of storage on the grinder because it doesn't, so you just kind of leave it. So that, I don't know. Now, I was really hoping that the Arc would be an absolute zero retention grinder, and it only kind of is. There really isn't a lot of space for coffee grinds to get stuck in, in a hand grinder as the conical burr is right above the grind chamber. My issue though is that without RDT, there can be a lot of static cling to the bottom of the grind chamber. Even with RDT, there can be a bit of retention, and I found that you've needed to kind of knock the grinder a few times, or even tap the grind chamber for the grinds to fall down. By the time you're done a shot of coffee, and if you don't put this grind chamber back right away, the static cling either detaches or something knocks the table, and the grinds go everywhere. It's a workflow thing that you need to adjust to, so a couple knocks on the grind chamber, or just understanding that RDT is almost necessary, is really important. But what do I love? I really love the cups that this produces. The coffee's delicious. In fact, we're gonna talk about cup profiles versus these other grinders, but I've had great cups of coffee with excellent clarity, and I think that Ghost Story has nailed the burr choice on this grinder. I have no issues, especially for a conical burr. The market, especially with specialty coffee, is leaning towards more and more clarity in coffees as a whole, which is a conversation for a whole nother time. This one delivers, right? It pulls great shots of espresso with good texture, but also produces good, good filter coffees with enough clarity. Also, the adjustment system here is really good. Now, it does use a similar system to something like the J Max, where you have multiple rotations because there are so many clicks, 270 clicks of adjustments. So that's great for espresso. You can do micro adjustments and I've had no issues with needing a setting in between a notch here. The thing is though, you might need to keep in mind how many rotations you're on. And while I'm normally critique grinders for that, this one actually has a little system on the front here to know how many rotations you're on. I found that it's not incredibly clear and it can be a little confusing. Let's also talk about the grind chamber itself. This is all made of metal. It's incredibly durable. And even the grind chamber is so satisfying to use. Like as a hand grinder itself, this would be competitive in the market to any other hand grinder today. It's nice to use. It's got outward exterior adjustments. It's got nice, I mean a nice uh, dosing chamber that's 58 millimeters for espresso. It's got a nice metal lid versus the plastic lids found on most grinders with a really nice ball handle that spins freely. Putting this on an electric base is incredibly smart. Now this is a good grinder, but how does it compare in the market today? Now we're gonna compare this to the Lego Mini and the Niche Zero, both being conical grinders that are in a similar price range, give or take. So I think the best way for us to break down these grinders is starting with taste. Let's, let's blindly cut these and I'm gonna share my thoughts. Okay, so I've done a blind cupping of these three coffees. And so now it's time to guess which is which. So this one right here in the middle, this one was by far the sweetest. My initial impressions were blackberries and it just really stood out as being the boldest of the three. Uh, this one over here had a lot more clarity, right? It had a well-balanced acidity. It was more tea-like in nature where this one was a little more fruity. This one over here was also good. I definitely felt like it was a little muted compared to these two cups, but I would still enjoy these. Two, this one. Very similar to this one. This one had a higher clarity where I think this one had a little more sweetness, and this one in the middle had less clarity, but a lot of sweetness up front. So I think 
It's time to guess which is which. Uh, I think this would be, I think the filter profile on the Arco is a, a little more clear, right? It produces a little less fine. So I'm going to assume this is the Arco. And because of the sweetness, this is the niche. Because of the clarity, I'm using the Moonshine version on the Legome. I'm going to say this one here is the Legome Mini. So let's, uh, I'm nervous. Okay, so this is the Legome Mini. That one's got an L underneath. Okay, so now it's between these two. And so this one I said was the Arco. Hey, we got it right. Okay, so that's the Arco in that. That's the niche. Okay, that made a lot of sense. So the Arco, it's a good cup profile. It tastes delicious. Um, if honest, I actually did prefer these two in the cupping. That could have been the coffee. But in my practice with the Arco after using it for over a month now, I enjoy the filter coffee profiles of the Arco over the niche. You know, espresso, they're both very good. A little more clarity on the Arco but still produces good textured shots where the niche is just obviously that that well-known textured espresso. And then the Lego Mini has a little more clarity. So it's so pretty interesting. These grinders are similar enough that the cup profiles were very, very good, but different enough to notice it in a blind testing. This does have a burr that is from Ida Mill and it has a interesting design. Something similar to the Kinu M47. Kinu M47 is notorious for really good uh, good cups of coffee with great clarity. Um, but for me, even in my premium hand grinder review, which you can watch up here, I said I preferred a little bit more sweetness in my cup over something like the Kinu. Now that's a subjective statement and this is where, you know, preferences come into play. Alone, I really like the Arco, but comparing it to other grinders, especially the Lego Mini, my preference might lean somewhere else. Now one important topic is workflow. And this is something that I was really hoping to really nitpick on the Arco about. I thought that these grinders would have a beat, but truly it doesn't. I think the workflow on the Arco is actually pretty good. Maybe not as good as the niche, as the niche is known as a workflow king. Why? Well, it's just simply so simple to put your beans in, you adjust your grind, you turn it on, and all the coffee comes out. These two also do that, but the grind adjustment systems aren't quite as nice to use as the niches. This one's stepless. This one is also stepless, but overall, all three of these have pretty good workflow. While I think the Arco suffers the most out of these three, I actually think it's pretty good. And these two are some of the best grinders in the industry today for the ease of workflow. This is a hand grinder after all, and the ability to easily see what grind setting you're on without having to take the base off the grinder is something that is obviously widely accepted today. That being said, you might want to consider the Lego Mini if you're wanting a travel grinder. You might not need a hand grinder, and this is actually fairly small. So this is really going to come down to you, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you'd choose for travel out of these two in the comments down below. So who is the Arco for? Why not just buy an electric grinder and a hand grinder separate, or should you just buy one of these two grinders behind me? I think the Arco is for a pretty specific person. The simplicity and minimalist approach to coffee is something that I can see why it would be desired. Having one piece of gear that you understand without having to learn different grind settings between a hand grinder and an electric grinder, while well, you kind of still have to do that on this, is a lot easier on the Arco. The Arco is a well-built grinder and it produces really good cups of coffee. So there's really no sacrifice in terms of cup quality for the design of this grinder. You have a grinder that can produce good coffee while also turning into a hand grinder so you can take camping on the go or to work or whatever that might look like. I think the Arco is a pretty interesting grinder and I don't think it should be written off. I came into this incredibly skeptical that this would be a grinder that anybody should consider. I purchased this so I could be completely honest and being honest with you, I actually like this grinder. I'm actually impressed with the overall workflow and design of it but it's got its flaws. The Niche Zero is a better grinder for using espresso daily. This can brew espresso and filter coffee absolutely fine, but the motor on the Niche Zero is obviously more powerful. That being said, the Niche Zero is more expensive, so you need to know your needs. If you want something very small that's great for filter coffee and the occasional espresso, maybe the Lego Mini is the option for you. But if you want a hybrid grinder and maybe you want a grinder to take on the go, I really don't think there's a better grinder on the market today than the Arco to fit this need. I would consider this over the Brazza Sette any day. I do want to see some upgrades to the Arco in the future, like some color upgrades and definitely fixing that motor. If this motor is fixed in the future and is quieter by the time you're watching this, this is a great grinder. But now I want to hear from you. Do you like the Arco? Did you like this video by tamping the like button down below? Tell me what your thoughts are on this and which grinder would you choose out of these three? I'm going to read every single comment down below. And if you want to learn more about these grinders and this segment, then be sure to click this video right here and we'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.